My name is Hannah and this is my no buy year. Welcome to yet another video in my five days of X series. This one, as you know, because you already clicked on it, is five days of red lipstick. And it's an extra exciting edition because this is a collab video. I'm collabing with Sarah Hubbler from The Beauty Hub. I love Sarah's channel. She's, she is very, practical, I feel. She is a beauty lover and has an amazing collection, but one of the things I really appreciate about watching Sarah is that she's just straightforward and practical and realistic about beauty. I mean, I was going to say about life, I guess. <laughs> I'm just extrapolating that from having watched her channel, but I get the sense that she just has a really good head on her shoulders and sees things clearly and sees things for what they are. Her channel is just a gem. I, I love all of her content, but I'm particularly fond of the magnificent declutter series that she does on that channel. She goes really deep. Like she'll have a whole video just for mauve lipsticks, for example, and then she'll have a whole other video for pink lipsticks. She's perfected the art of overhead shots. Like she has these really beautiful, overhead camera shots where you can see everything super clearly. She swatches everything, she opens everything, and she goes through and talks about why she's keeping or why she's getting rid of everything. It is just beautiful to behold. So she started out her channel with a big declutter series and then I think enough time has passed that she's just recently shot a second declutter series or maybe she's in the middle of shooting it right now because new videos keep coming up. But she's done all of her lipsticks, all of her blushes I believe, single eyeshadows now, I wonder if she'll do eyeshadow palettes. Sarah, are you gonna to get to eyeshadow palettes soon? I can't wait. For the past several weeks, I think since she started posting this new declutter series, I basically watch Sarah's declutters as my ritual for winding down at night. After I get in bed, and I know you shouldn't watch screens in bed, and I'm trying to get back to only reading in bed, but I just feel like I can't quite wean myself off specifically of Sarah Hubbler's declutters as my bedtime story. I appreciate those declutters a lot, but they are kind of just one aspect of what is a robust and really enjoyable channel. So if you aren't subscribed to Sarah, head on over to the Beauty Hub and check her out. I will link her channel and her five days of red lipstick video in the description box down below. I can't wait to see her video. I can't wait to see the red lipsticks that she decides to wear and what she says about them. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Hey guys, it's Saturday morning. This is the first day of my five days of lipstick. I believe that Sarah is filming hers Monday through Friday, which is what I usually do. Sorry, the washing machine is running. The morning, as always, is full of noises, but hopefully you'll still be able to hear me. I believe Sarah is filming hers Monday through Friday, which is what I usually do when I film these five-day videos, but on Thursday, Joe and I are leaving to drive up to San Francisco. We will be vending at a tango marathon there next weekend, so I'm starting early so that I can get all five days in before I have to leave. I chose for today's lip color this Bobbi Brown Crushed Lip Color in the shade Babe. They say that this is a pink, kind of a soft corally pink, but on me I feel it definitely reads as a red. I keep it with my reds and I think of it as a red and I find it particularly useful for days like this when I am for some reason incentivized to wear a red lip or a strong lip, but I don't want it to be too, too sharp. And that's today. I am working today even though it's a Saturday due to the aforementioned schedule change this week. I have to get in a full five days of work before we can leave. So I'll be going down to the studio, I'll be sewing, and then I actually have a private tango lesson, a student coming to my studio in the afternoon for a lesson. So there's that and then I think Joe and I are going to go grocery shopping after my lesson. That's 
not the kind of day on which I would usually wear a red. So it was interesting getting ready this morning. I think the fact that I knew I was going to wear a red lip actually affected everything from what I put on my eyes and the rest of my face through to what I decided to wear because I was planning to wear just kind of a t-shirt and leggings because I'm going to be running around t-shirt legging sneakers kind of like a workout gear type of day but when I got ready to put that on I felt like it would look a little bit funny with a bold lip for me so I decided to go with something that's a little bit more kind of statement drapey casual still dancerly still something that I can teach in but not quite as casual so Already, the five days of red lips is telling me something about the relationship between makeup and fashion and my concept of my personal style. Anyway, that's part of why I went for this softer red. It's definitely one of the least impactful reds that I own, and I will tell you what I did with the rest of my face to kind of balance it out. On my eyes, I just went in with mascara and then I noticed that underneath my lower lash line there was a little bit of smudged makeup from yesterday. Yesterday was actually the last day of five days of star palette so I had a lot of makeup on last night. So I went in with this Laura Mercier caviar stick eye color in steel. It's a gray and a teeny teeny tiny angle brush and I just took it on the angle brush and I smudged some of it underneath my lashes on my lower lash line just to even out and slightly enhance that look. There's nothing on my skin besides a little bit of spot concealer and color corrector. No highlight, no blush, I haven't even put my mole back on. When I applied the lip, I went over my cupid's bow on the top. I just made one smooth line rather than defining the cupid's bow. I also overlined the tiniest bit and then I smudged that line with my finger and with a q-tip a little bit to soften it. So it's sort of a soft, flush, casual lip. I think going over the cupid's bow rather than defining it and making sure there's no clean lines around the edges of the lip, that's another part of what makes it look less mincing, more casual, a little bit easier, and it makes a little bit more sense for the kind of day that I'm about to have. Hey guys, it's Sunday. I'm in kind of a rush right now, but I did want to briefly review the Bobbi Brown Crushed Lip Color that I wore yesterday. I love this. I've talked about it before. I love the formula. It feels like a balm, but it wears like a lipstick. It wears like a regular bullet lipstick, so I had to reapply it around four yesterday in order to have a fresh lip look for the second part of the day and evening. But all in all, this is ideal. This is something I really, really love in my collection. And I think that yesterday when I was filming, it looked quite shiny because it was freshly applied. It has more of a satin finish. It's not always as shiny as it looks when you first put it on. It, it's a pretty natural lip color and I don't know. It's one of my favorite discoveries lately in terms of formula. So I have nothing but good things to say about it. Here are those birds. That might be the wild parrots. Anyway, it's actually Sunday afternoon right now. I went to Bikram this morning. That's a hot yoga class. And so of course I didn't wear lipstick to that class. And then right after that, I had a phone call with a friend who is in training to become a clairvoyant reader, a psychic reader. So he gave me a psychic reading to test out what he's learning and it made me cry. So the combination of going to hot yoga and then having that experience has left me feeling kind of like a blotchy, red-eyed, red-faced mess. And so I decided to kind of go with that for my look today because I actually do have to run out the door. I have to go down to the studio and get in a couple of hours of sewing before I head off to teach a group tango class tonight. So I do need to look presentable. I had to do something. And I also have a blemish on the corner of my mouth in a really inconvenient place that's making my mouth swollen a little bit. So just overall my face is like not in the best shape. So what I did was I went for my lips with a kind of blotted matte stained popsicle type of lip. To create that I used my M Cosmetics Infinite Lip Cloud in the color Crimson. I find that this is one of the most natural looking strong reds that I have. Natural looking mean that it looks kind of faded and blotchy and stained and that that doesn't look bad in my opinion. It looks like 
lived in. It's like a lived in red. And the color too is it's a little bit soft. It's not so orange or so blue red. It, it is a bluer red, but it's kind of got it's a softness that makes me feel like I can wear it on more casual days or wear it when I don't have much else going on on my face. So I decided to put some blush on my cheeks and I actually brought that same blush onto my eyelids. It's the Ofra blush in Winter Rose Flush, I think. It's Winter Rose something that Courtney sent me when she sent me a box of goodies. And so that's the only thing that's on the rest of my face. I don't have any highlight or anything. A little color corrector and spot concealer, but really there wasn't much that I could do with my complexion today. So blush on my cheeks and my eyelids, lots of mascara on my upper and my lower lashes, and the lip, and that's it for the day. Hey guys, good morning. It is Monday morning. This is the third day of my five days of red lipstick, and it's Monday. So it's a work day for me. I have a bunch of writing work to do today and then I have a bunch of sewing work to do to prepare for what will actually be a Wednesday photo shoot this week because we're leaving on Thursday. Sorry about the noise. Something's happening in the alley outside. I'm not sure what it is. Today I challenged myself to kind of come up with an eye that I feel like can pair well with a red lip for day and not make me feel too overdone and not make me feel awkward or feel like I'm overdressed for the day. And the thing I wanted is a, a shadow that I've been noticing has come out in a bunch of palettes lately. I was dreaming of like a warm silver. I've seen one in the ColourPop, what was it? ColourPop's fall palette. The one that had the purple leopard print on it or the purple cheetah. I can't remember what they called the palette, but it had this really gorgeous, almost mossy, like warm silver bronze shadow in it that I saw and I was just like, beautiful. There's also one in the Sultry palette by ABH. I think it's the one called Cyborg. It might not be, but there's one of those shadows that's like a, like a warm, almost neutral silver, a silver that's not too cool toned, that doesn't end up looking gray. So I've been dreaming of that kind of shadow and then I remembered last night when I was falling asleep and thinking about what makeup I would wear today that I have one. This is the NARS Loaded palette. I shopped my stash for it way back, I think in February or March, and my favorite eyeshadow in this palette is this one. I, I guess it's called Splendor. It's right here in the bottom corner and it is exactly that. To my eyes, it looks just like the one in the Sultry palette, it looks just like the one in that ColourPop palette, and so I decided to put that all over my lids today. I just patted it on, smudged it out, it's essentially my single shadow all over lid eye look. Oh my gosh, I just realized that I forgot to review yesterday's lipstick, which is what I meant to do right at the beginning every time I check in. Yesterday's whole look actually I'm going to talk about. I ended up loving it. When I did it I was just kind of like mm, I'm doing my best but when I caught sight of myself in the mirror at the studio a couple of hours later I, I really liked the look. I felt like it was light in spite of the red lip. It was a light but editorial look and very wearable and it wore really well throughout the day as well. When I got home late at the end of teaching my tango class I had been talking for an hour and a half teaching the class and the lip had worn down really to a stain, like a wine stain, but it was like a soft, velvety, winey stain, and it still looked cute, I felt. I really, when I came home and started cooking, I was, I, I was like, you know, I would just leave this like this. I don't feel like I need to reapply it. I mean, why would I reapply it at night while I was cooking? But even if I hadn't been, that's the point, even if I had been out in the world, I would have been okay with how that looked. Anyway, back to this look. I am wearing the NARS Velvet Lip Glide in La Palace. It was a deluxe sample size that I received from Sephora at some point last year, I think, and it's also a little bit of a cool toned red. I tend towards warm toned reds. Those tend to be the ones that I kind of love, love, love. But there's something about this color, maybe it's the perfect balance between warm and cool. I always love how it looks throughout the day. I always just feel like mm, there's something about it. It's one of those perfect reds for me. This is also a beautiful formula. My lips are feeling a bit dry. That's part of why I picked it. It really feels like a nourishing gloss. It goes on like a nourishing gloss. It actually goes on quite glossy. I blotted this to take away some of the shine 
in the immediate because I was about to film and also I prefer to blot my lips. It doesn't dry down completely like a true liquid lipstick, but it does set down a little bit more over the course of the first maybe 45 minutes and it does become a little bit more matte. It will probably become a little more matte even than this over the course of the day. On the rest of my face, I, I have nothing except for a little bit of spot concealer. I've been so pleased with the glow that I'm getting from my Pixi Rose Glow Mist that I have just felt like I can go without any kind of illuminator at all. I really feel like it's it's working for me right now. Putting anything else on my face would have quickly moved me into the territory of being quite made up and I just am not feeling that today because it's a Monday. I'm just going to be writing and sewing and, you know, living my little Hannah life. I'll zoom in a little bit and kind of try to give you an idea. I don't know what's cat hair. Try to give you an idea of how things are looking. Hey guys, so it's Monday evening and I went ahead and put on a different red lip to film this evening's video. Partly just for diversity for this video, but also because the lips that I wore during the day today did not wear well. I told you this morning that I really like that lipstick and then I remember really loving the way it looked throughout the day but today every time I looked at the mirror it looked horrible it was like bleeding around the corners of my lips maybe because my lips are extra dry but maybe also because I was chewing gum for part of the day but still it didn't seem like what I was doing would have disturbed it as much as it was disturbed and all of the other lipsticks that I've been wearing this week haven't had that problem the other thing was it didn't become as matte and it wasn't as tenacious as I remember it being. It really seemed to stay kind of glossy. It was almost like a gloss. There was nothing velvet about it for the whole day. This on the other hand is a tried and true, one of my old favorites. It is another NARS product, the Velvet Lip Pencil in Famous Red. So I didn't actually redo my makeup tonight for the video. I just piled more stuff onto my eyes. I went on with the Natasha Denona Chroma Crystal Top Coat in Gray Brown. And I think because there was so much underneath it already, it started creasing a little bit while I was eating dinner. So then when I sat down just now, I went over top of that with this Urban Decay eyeshadow. It's the color Midnight Rodeo. And it's a really pretty kind of glittery, pale taupe with, with glitters in it. It's really, really a cool eyeshadow. So I kind of packed that on to the creasing, but I can see that it's kind of creasing still. I don't mind it. I'm feeling like the glittery, grungy, lived-in look here with my eyes. The other thing I did, obviously, I hope, is that I smoked out the outer corner with some black and smoked it up kind of a little further out, a little further up, and more on the lower lash line. I added some black liner, etc. I just generally dressed up the look that I had on earlier. This is like that look on steroids. Joe is doing the dishes particularly loudly right now. I don't know what's up with that. It is election day in the United States of America. I voted and if you live here in this country, I hope you did too. I also, in addition to voting, dyed my eyebrows since the last time we spoke. I finally made time to do it last night, which is good. It means my life isn't completely out of my control. They are looking pretty intense, and I went for a pretty intense and kind of editorially unbalanced look today, so I'm feeling kind of intense. I feel like this is the most editorial and only barely wearable look that I've done this whole week. On my lips, I'm wearing Tom Ford Wild Ginger, my one full-size Tom Ford lipstick, and one of my all-time favorite lipsticks. Putting it on today, I was reminded just what an incredibly bold color it is. It's not just red-orange, it's not just bright red, it's so statement, it's so powerful. And I'm not sure I was really prepared for it, but I'm rolling with it. I forgot to mention last night that when I applied it yesterday, I outlined my cupid's bow. So I was wearing a bit more of a structured lip last night than I am right now, for example. When I applied Wild Ginger this morning, I just elided straight over my cupid's bow to give kind of more plump, round, youthful shape to my mouth. But I felt like the color and formula of this just demanded an outlined lip last night and so that is what I went ahead and did and I was talking with this on for maybe an hour and a half two hours when I was filming last night maybe two hours 
and it was just perfect. It's so beautifully matte and I was reminded last night that this is really a matte lipstick and sometimes I find these NARS Velvet lip pencils to be a little bit drying but if I think of it as a matte lipstick like as an alternative to a matte liquid lip or even a really dry bullet lip then the formula really starts to amaze me because it has this beautiful powdery matte finish but it's very comfortable. So I'm kind of re-fallen in love with this lipstick. I, I kind of wanted to wear it again today, to be honest, but that wouldn't be in the spirit of five days of front lipstick, so I'm gonna save it, but I, I bet I'll be wearing it a lot this weekend in San Francisco. Anyway, part of what makes this look so editorial to me is the very strong brow. I mean, these brows will mellow out in a day or two after I've washed my face a couple of times, but it's also what I chose to do on the rest of my face. So I went in with this Cover FX Shimmer Veil in the color Amethyst on my eyes. I just put a light wash of it on my eyes. It's a very, very glittery paste that dries down to a super tenacious, thin, thin layer and has kind of a violet shift. So I put that on my eyes in a pretty thin layer and I also put it on my cheeks as my highlight and then inspired by my kind of blushy blotchy look from Sunday I believe it was, I went over it just on the tops of the cheekbones and on the outer corner of the eye with blush and I used this hourglass um, ambient lighting blush in Radiant Magenta, which was the gift from Wendy. So that's what's going on in my face. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can get a better idea of how it's looking IRL. Hey guys, so it's Wednesday morning. This is the last day of my five days of red lipstick. It is also the day before we leave to go to San Francisco for the Tango Marathon, so we're having to move our photo shoot, which is usually on Fridays, up to Wednesday. That's why I was like working through the weekend. So I just went and put on my photo shoot makeup, starring, of course, a red lipstick. But before I tell you about it, I'm going to review the lip from yesterday, and I actually have some interesting information, I think, to share. I absolutely love this lipstick. It's possibly my all-time favorite lipstick. There's nothing that I would wish different about it. I just think it's perfect. I love, love, love the color. I love the formula. It's the most tenacious bullet lipstick I've ever worn, so it really stays on the lips for a long, long time and feels comfortable and continues to kind of look creamy and soft, but without being too creamy or too soft such that it would wear away when you're eating or drinking or something like that. I just, I, I mean, I don't know if any lipstick can be called worth the $50, but I, I do think that this is a case of the formula being exquisite in addition to the color selection in this range of very high-end lipsticks. I was chewing gum again yesterday. I was chewing my Turkish unsweetened gum and I did get some bleeding at the corners of my mouth when I was chewing the gum wearing this lipstick, just like I had when I was wearing the NARS lipstick the day before. It was much worse with the NARS lipstick because I think that the NARS Velvet Lip Glide is just a, a less sticky, a less tenacious formula, but I determined that the bleeding I was getting in the corners of my mouth when I wore this was definitely because I was chewing gum all day because I've worn this a number of times and I've never had that problem before with it and so it was definitely the gum that caused that problem. So I'm not feeling like this NARS Velvet Lip Glide is as in the doghouse as it was at the end of the day when I chose to wear it because I learned that this one, which is my pride and joy, also had that same issue. So it's definitely the gum and not the lipstick. I really wanted to go in with red eyeshadow with red lips for one of these days and the photo shoot day is the day to do it because it's the day that I put on a full face of glam makeup. I pulled out this incredible red eyeshadow that I have. It's a Makeup Forever M846. It's one of their old big pans. I think it's supposed to be a versatile product. Like it can be for the eyes and the cheeks. I mean that's true of everything, all eyeshadows, but it's marketed as a blush, eyeshadow, whatever. And I played with this during Makeup Playtime earlier in the week and I was so impressed by how it performed. I actually hate to say it, but 
it blew the Natasha Denona mats out of the water. I was using it and I was like, oh, this is what people mean when they talk about an eyeshadow blending itself. So I threw that up into the crease. I packed it pretty densely into the crease of my eye, but I blended a lot of it up above my crease to make my hooded eyes look bigger and less hooded. And it diffused out to kind of a pink. You can see it's actually quite a cool toned red. Then I used some chocolatey brown in the outer corners and also some black. On the inner part of my lid, I went in once again with Urban Decay Midnight Rodeo. It kind of lost its glitters while I was doing that, but I did want the glitter, so I went in with my Urban Decay Midnight Cowboy just gold glitter liner, and I used that to put glitter just on the inner portion, inner corner, underneath my eyes in the inner corner, and then about a third of the way across the lid. So the lip that I paired with this eye look is the Yves Saint Laurent Vinyl Cream Creamy Stain. I have a deluxe sample size of it that I got from Jennifer and it's in the color 401. As you can see it's also a pretty intensely cool toned red. I did really carve my lips out with this product and I carved out my cupid's bow as well which again isn't my usual MO. Usually I kind of blot the edges, but I thought that for this more structured look, it was appropriate. I'm actually gonna take my hair down so you can kind of see how it will look for the shoot because I'm gonna wear my hair down for the shoot. Hey y'all, so I'm home from the photo shoot. It's the middle of the afternoon. I'm gonna go ahead and film the wrap up for this video and then I'm gonna start packing and get ready for the weekend. I feel like I might be getting sick, which would be a total disaster because I have to work straight through this weekend. So fingers crossed that it'll be just a flash in the pan and that I'll be right as rain tomorrow morning. This is how I ended up doing my hair for the shoot. I just piled it up on my head with a bunch of pins and I think it worked out really well. I actually just kept on the same eye look that I was wearing this morning because time is of the essence and I didn't want to wash my whole entire face. Usually when I get home from the photo shoot, the first thing I do is to wash my whole face because it's so much makeup and I don't really like having all of that makeup on my skin. But today I just wiped off the makeup that was on my face using some micellar water and one of my reusable cotton pads and I just applied a little bit of color corrector and spot concealer to go with this lip but I left the eye look. But I did want to spice it up a little bit for the intro and outro to this video, so I actually went back in with that same pan of Makeup Forever color, that really, really red, the one that's on my eyes, and I used that as a blush. I was talking this morning about how it's an all-purpose product and I wanted to see how it would lay down as a blush. It went on really quite pigmented, but then it buffed way out, it became very diffuse, it buffed out beautifully. The Vinyl Cream Lip Stain that I wore earlier for the shoot wore beautifully. It looked great in the pictures and it didn't really budge. I actually ate something. I ate like a spoonful of nut butter or something and it wore away a little bit from the inner rim of my lips and all I had to do was just like rub my lips together and it redistributed the product and it looked flawless once again. So. In spite of the fact that it's shiny and you would think it would be kind of hard to control, I actually think this is one of the most stable and longest lasting red lips out of all of the ones that I've worn this week. What I'm wearing on my lips right now is the Fenty Stunna Lip Paint in Uncensored. I wanted to work it in at some point this week and I realized just now when I sat down to film that I hadn't yet worn it, so I'm glad that I remembered. And I can already review this formula now. I've worn it several times. I, I feel mixed about it. I, I don't love it. The main reason that I don't love it is that it is so messy. It's so hard to control. It's the combination of the fact that it's so, so liquidy, which isn't necessarily a bad thing when it comes to a liquid lip, but it's, it's also so, so pigmented like an ink, like a stain, but it's really, really, really watery and it just gets everywhere. It gets all over your teeth, all over your tongue, and it's really hard to make a sharp line with it when you're first applying. It's hard to apply it without it bleeding. It's hard to clean it up. On top of which, when this was new and everyone was getting it and everyone was trying it, I watched so many very, very talented beauty gurus apply this product unevenly. 
like it looked bad. People who tried to go around and make a really sharp lip line and outline their lips, people who are really good at doing that, who always have it perfectly symmetrical every time, who have really symmetrical lips, it always looked like a child had drawn a little bit outside the lines. It always looked like someone had done it with an unsteady hand. And I don't think it's the shape of the wand. I think it's the the formula, like how thin and inky it is. So what I always end up doing is I apply a layer on my lips and I try not to be too precise. I try not to get too much of the formula too close to the edges of my lips because it can so easily bleed out over the edge. And then I take a Q-tip and sort of buff the edges and then I take my fingers and kind of buff the edges and I end up with this extremely stained looking kind of popsicle stained I, I recently saw a makeup artist describe it as like the I've been crying for three hours lips the sort of swollen stained popsicle lip but with a really really intense pigmented color on the majority of the lip and I love the color. I love how it looks. It is very long wearing. It's velvety and rich, but not drying, and it doesn't look dry. The color is stunning, and I actually do like this lip look. I, I like the way that this looks. It's kind of one of my favorite lip looks in my entire red lip collection. But number one, I'm aware that this is my way of wearing it and I love this but I feel like it's advertised to be worn like a normal liquid lipstick and I've pretty much never seen anyone do that successfully. It always looks sloppy. Number two, it takes so long to get this look that a lot of times even though I might like to wear it I just don't feel like messing with it. So this product kind of barely made it through my declutter I'm still thinking about whether I'm going to keep it. I think it'll be just a matter of how many times I actually end up reaching for it and wearing it between now and the next time I declutter my lipsticks. And that is it. That's five days of me wearing red lipstick every day. It was a little bit of a challenge. I didn't feel like wearing a red every day. And it's just partly because of the five days that these happened to be. I was working a lot. I was busy. But I did enjoy all of the reds that I wore. And it was interesting to get to know my red lipstick collection better. If you saw my declutter, you know what I have, but I'll actually show you right here. I've separated them all out this week so that I would be able to choose from them more easily. So I put them in the lid of this box and these are all of them. These are all the reds. I think I wore mm, six or seven, maybe eight of them this week. And I'm not sick of it. It doesn't make me want to take a break from wearing red lipsticks. On the contrary, I actually think that I might want to take NARS Famous Red with me to San Francisco and rock it this weekend because I enjoyed wearing that so much. And Sarah, thank you so much for doing this collab with me. This is really cool. I can't wait to see Sarah's video and see which lipsticks she chose to wear and see her reviews of them. This was a cool idea for a video on which to collab and I'm really glad we decided to do it. And again, you guys definitely go check out Sarah Hubbler's channel. You won't regret it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll remember to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.